Welcome back to the Equine Anatomy Lectures. Um, today we'll, we'll uh, talk about uh, the last part of the anatomy of the equine forelimb. And uh, in, in this uh, uh, part we will talk about um, uh, nerve blocks, which is basically part of the uh, lameness evaluation. Uh, we talked about um, the forelimb, the, the bones and the muscles of the forelimb. Of the forelimb, and then we talked about the um, the different tendons, the different landmarks, the passive stay apparatus, uh, all the joints, and uh, how to inject them. And then uh, we talked about a number of diseases that um, that uh, the forelimb um, encounters, and, and that is basically um, laminitis, navicular disease, and and sole abscesses, among other uh, diseases. Uh, next, we will be talking about nerve blocks. And as I mentioned, uh, nerve blocks is uh, basically uh, part of the lameness evaluation. And, and this uh, part is done uh, um, um, systematically and uh, from the ground up. Um, so, so you start from the very distal end of the, of the, um, of the foot and then you go, you go up to rule out basically. Um, each of the structures distally and then uh, all the way to the to the to the shoulder uh, and, and here what I will do is I'm, I'm going to summarize the um, the two nerves and their branches uh, the two nerves that supply the, um, the, the forelimb and um, their their branches and then we'll we'll talk about um, the the most important four nerve blocks that we utilize in order for us to, to diagnose any lameness um, uh, case. If, if, um, if anything happened after those four blocks, that means we need more um, sophisticated, if you will, um, uh, techniques, um, you know, diagnostic techniques or modalities, uh, radiographs, um, uh, uh, ultrasound, um, uh, nuclear scintigraphy, uh, MRIs, uh, and others. So, so, so we let let's start by by talking about the um, the nerves of the uh, of the forelimb. Okay, so so the innervation of the forelimb comes from the brachial plexus. The brachial plexus gives two nerves: median nerve on the medial aspect of the forelimb and ulnar nerve. On the lateral aspect of the forelimb, the median uh, nerve uh, on the medial aspect of the forelimb continues and gives two branches: medial palmar and lateral palmar. Uh, the medial palmar gives a communicating branch that unites with the lateral palmar and continues as the medial palmar nerve all the way until it reaches the digit. At the digit level, it becomes the medial di palmar digital nerve. That also at the level of the fetlock, it gives a dorsal branch. So the dorsal branch and the medial palmar digital nerves uh, reach P3. Now, the lateral palmar nerve unites with the palmar branch of the ulnar nerve on the lateral side of the forelimb, gives a deeper branch, which also known as the deep branch of the lateral palmar nerve at the level of the carpus and continues its course as a lateral palmar digital nerve at the level of the uh, fetlock. Now, also this lateral palmar digital nerve gives a dorsal branch, similar to the medial palmar digital, gives another, gives a dorsal branch and both the lateral palmar digital and the dorsal branch both reach P3, again, exactly like the medial palmar digital nerve and its dorsal branch, which also reach P3. Now, now the deep branch that I talked about here, the deep branch uh, divides uh, to medial and lateral, to medial and lateral palmar metacarpal nerves that reach the proximal uh, uh, fetlock. So this is, this is the fetlock, as I mentioned earlier, it's probably probably to this area here, toward the splint bones, the end of the splint bone, the buttons. We call that the 
those are the buttons of the of the um, of the splint bones um, as, and 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 they end they end at the buttons basically and uh, now the the uh, ulnar the ulnar nerve branches here into a dorsal branch not shown here which ends at the distal radius on the lateral on the lateral uh, side and also the palmar branch which unites with the lateral here with the with the uh, lateral uh, palmar uh, nerve from the median and it continues uh, basically uh, uh, with it um, as 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 the um, lateral palmar uh, uh, nerve which comes to the fetlock becomes the lateral palmar digital nerve and it gives the dorsal branch as i mentioned so so if if we can let's, let's repeat those so so the innervation comes from the brachial plexus the brachial plexus gives two two nerves a median on the medial aspect and ulnar on the lateral aspect of the forelimb the median uh, gives two branches medial palmar and lateral palmar the medial palmar gives a communicating branch that meets the lateral palmar and continues the medial palmar continues all the way until it reaches the fetlock it becomes the medial palmar digital nerve the name just changes into palmar digital instead of just medial palmar it becomes medial palmar digital and at the level of the fetlock it gives also a dorsal branch both the medial palmar digital nerve and the dorsal branch reach p3 the the lateral palmar uh, gives as i mentioned a uh, uh, a deep branch and also a dorsal branch the uh, the the deep branch uh, gives uh, two nerves a medial and palmar metacarpal nerves that reach all the way to the buttons of the of the splint bones two and four and continues as the lateral palmar nerve all the way at uh, just like the medial palmar all the way until it reaches the fetlock it gives the uh, lateral uh, it gives the dorsal branch and continues as the lateral palmar digital nerve both the lateral palmar digital nerve and the dorsal branch or its dorsal branch uh, reach p3 so so this is basically the innervation of the uh, of the um, of the forelimb now let's take a look at where the 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 nerve blocks take place and i'll mention and i'll mention these landmarks this is the first nerve block one two three and four and here we start with one and i'm going to talk about it now then if one, if one did not work we go to two if one worked meaning that the horse became sound after the nerve block sound meaning there is no lameness or there is very very little lameness or or or, or cured basically we don't go to the next one if if the horse is cured if the lameness is, is gone now, if the lameness is not gone, we need to go to the upper level, and we need to go to two. Again, if the horse is sound, then the problem is located between one and two, or the nerves that supplies one and two. So any structure that's supplied by the nerves of the first and the second nerve blocks, that means uh, 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 those structures are involved in the in the uh, cause of lameness. If the lameness is not eliminated, then we have to go up. A little bit higher and that is three you can see here the the splint bone and here is the button that I was talking to you about just at the at the very end of the of the head of the arrow here you can see the button of the of the splint bone this is splint bone four of course because we are on the lateral side the other side is the medial side which is splint bone two after that the mid metacarpal area is number number four we will talk about each of these of these nerve blocks we will talk about each of them and what structures um, are we going to be blocking. The first nerve block 
is called the palmar digital nerve block or PD nerve block. PD nerve block. You do it while the limb is held. So you hold it, and I, and I have a, a picture to show you how to do that next. But for now, you hold the limb, and the landmark to do the injection, two injections, of course, both medial and lateral proximal to the cartilages of the foot remember we have two cartilages medial and lateral that sometimes when they are calcified we call them side bone so proximal to the cartilages you give the two injections and this is a cross section here and you find the bundle that contain, contains the the artery uh, vein and nerve and then you feel the deep digital flexor tendon, the superficial digital flexor tendon. And beside them, again, proximal to the cartilages of the, of the hoof, you give your injections medially and laterally. This nerve block will desensitize the structures of the whole foot. The whole foot meaning navicular bone and bursa, distal portion of the superficial and the deep digital flexor tendons, the digital cushion in here, all of these structures will be desensitized. So if the problem, so if the problem is in one of these structures, that means this nerve blocks will eliminate the problem. So if the lameness is caused by one of these problems, one of these structures, then when you block the nerve, the lameness is gone. If it did not work, then you have to go to the next nerve block. Of course, here, b before we go to the next nerve block, we have to know that the palmar digital nerves will be blocked. Both medial and lateral palmar digital nerves will be blocked not necessarily their dorsal branches because the dorsal branch as i as i me mentioned in the previous slide occurs at the level of the fetlock this is the fetlock joint this is the pastern joint this is the coffin joint so at the level of the fetlock the branching of the medial and the lateral digital nerves occur the branching to give the dorsal branch they both branch the medial one branches to give a dorsal branch and the lateral uh, uh, nerve, the lateral palmar digital nerve also branch to give a dorsal branch as well. But this happens at the level of the fetlock. Here you are way below the fetlock. So here you inject or you block the palmar digital nerves, both medial and lateral. And this happens with the limb is flexed and Proximal to the levels of the hoof cartilages. Proximal to the level of the hoof cartilages. And you desensitize the navicular bone and bursa, the cushion, the digital cushion, and also the uh, distal portion of uh, uh, the deep digital flexor tendon and the superficial digital flexor tendon. Now again, if this nerve blocks did not work, if it worked, that means the problem is within these three structures in the foot. Navicular bone and bursa, cushion or uh, digit, uh, or distal end of, of uh, uh, DDF and uh, SDF. Now, if, if the lameness continues, then we have to go to the next nerve block. This is the way you're gonna, you're gonna do the PD nerve block. These are the cartilages of the hub. One and two. Lateral and medial. Lateral and medial. So above them, proximal to those, you will feel the bundle and you give the injection. And after you do the injection, you, of course, you, 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 you prep and clip sometimes the, the area surgically. So you don't want to in, introduce any infections here. And then after that, after that, you give your, your two injections, medial and lateral, medial and lateral. And then you wait another about a couple minutes and start testing. You put pressure on the coronet here. A coronary band to, to see to press with a pen or or a, 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 
a hemostat or something uh, uh, to not a sharp object though uh, to 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 cause pain if the horse did not respond that means your block is good your block is working and you let the horse of course run if there is lameness still that means you did not eliminate the problem here so you need to go up higher if you eliminate it then the problem is being eliminated and the problem is going to be navicular bone and bursa cushion and distal end of uh, superficial and deep digital flexor tendons which basically the structures reach this area and they are supplied by the medial and lateral palmar digital nerves again not their dorsal branch please remember not the dorsal branches of the medial and lateral palmar digital nerves why because the because the dorsal branches happen at the level of the fetlock here you did not do this yet now if lameness is still as i mentioned uh, earlier if if it if it continues then we have to go to the next nerve block and this nerve block is called basi sesamoid nerve block basi sesamoid because the it's done at the base of the sesamoid bones at the base of the proximal sesamoid bones again the limb is held just like the previous uh, 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 slide just like the previous slide and this will desensitize the pastern joint and of course all of the structures of the foot which were done before so this will desensitize the pastern joint the pastern joint again if if you've eliminated the problem then that's great then the problem is going to be in within the fetlock and below fetlock and below if you did not eliminate the problem then you have to go higher than the fetlock joint and this nerve block which is the third nerve block is called low palmar nerve block low palmar nerve block okay the low palmar nerve blocks you give four injections the previous two nerve blocks pd or palmar digital and basis sesamoid you give two injections one medial one lateral in the low palmar which is this one you give four injections now at the heads of the splints the buttons basically of the splints you give one injection on the medial side one injection on the lateral side and the dorsal border of the deep digital flexor and the dorsal border of the deep digital flexor deep digital flexor you give two injections this is the superficial digital flexor this is the deep digital flexor this is the suspensory ligament and here you have the splints so at the end of the splints you give two injections medial and lateral and dorsal to the deep digital flexor you give two injections medial and lateral again the limb is going to be standing in this case and this will desensitize the fetlock joint itself the fetlock joint itself it desensitizes the fetlock joint because it desensitizes the median and lateral palmar digital nerves and their dorsal branches and sometimes you will you will you will desensitize the two metacarpal uh, nerves medial and lateral palmar metacarpal nerves medial and lateral palmar metacarpal nerves now if this nerve block eliminate the problem the lameness so the horse is sound that means it's great that means you you've done you've done well you that means the problem is fetlock or below fetlock included fetlock or below now if you did not meaning that the lameness is still uh, uh, happening then what you need to go up to the fourth nerve block so we started with pd nerve block then we went to the basis sesamoid then we went to the low palmar nerve block and then we're going to go to the high now we're going to go to the high palmar nerve block high palmar nerve block and usually it's done at the level of the med metacarpus med metacarpus to basically to basically 
include the communicating branch. The communicating branch, as I mentioned, that comes from the uh, medial palmar nerve, which comes from the median nerve and meets the lateral palmar nerve, uh, which is the other branch of the medial median nerve. Uh, now, again, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, medial and lateral uh, metacarpal uh, uh, nerves, medial palmar metacarpal and lateral palmar metacarpal nerves, along with the communicating branch, this also is done on the on the on the uh, uh, mid. Uh, metacarpal area when the horse is standing and uh, again it's four injections four injections uh, between the splints you give two injections and the cannon and then the dorsal border of the deep digital flexor also two injections medial and lateral so mid uh, splint bones between the splint and the cannon which is the third metacarpal bone you give one injection on the medial aspect and the other is on the lateral aspect and the other two injections you give them again on the dorsal border of the uh, deep digital flexor tendon the deep digital flexor tendon that's how uh, this nerve block is uh, uh, is done and you desensitize the splint bones and the proximal suspensory ligament the proximal suspensory um, uh, ligament in in this area so everything in this area and below will be desensitized after that if you did not eliminate the lameness you start going up higher and we don't want to go there because you start to get into joint injections and things like that and it, you need you need more modalities because the structure starts to get more and more uh, complicated uh, but remember if you want to go up that means you're going to do a joint block for the carpus, and you know how to do the nerve block, uh, the, the joint block for the carpus joint. Remember the landmark, which is the tendon of the extensor carpi radialis that covers the dorsal aspect of, of the carpus. On either side, you give the injections, on either side, medial or lateral, to the, to the tendon of the uh, common digital extensor, which, which basically you will reach the two joints, the radiocarpal, and the inner carpal and uh, we know that there are three joints radiocarpal inner carpal and carpal metacarpal but we also know that the inner carpal and the carpal metacarpal communicate so one injection which is in the inner carpal joint is enough to get both the inner carpal joint and the uh, 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 carpal metacarpal uh, joint so one injection will get both of them however uh, another injection, another separate injection should be done to get the radiocarpal uh, 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 joint. Again, each of these injections um, or either of these injections should be done medial or lateral to the to the uh, to the uh, uh, tendon of the uh, extensor carpi radialis, which covers the joints on the dorsal aspect. Uh, with this, uh, we conclude the the, the lectures of the. Uh, of the uh, uh, four limb, uh, this last section was uh, done uh, to basically cover uh, nerve blocks, which is part of the of the lameness evaluation, uh, which we started uh, from the distal aspect of the limb all the way to the uh, carpus. We did four nerve blocks. We did palmar digital, which will desensitize the palmar digital nerves, both medial and lateral, and it will be done at the uh, proximal to the to the cartilages of the um, of the hoof, the alar cartilages we called them before, uh, with if the which um, will desensitize the uh, navicular bone and bursa and uh, the cushion, the digital cushion, as well as the distal end of the deep digital flexor tendon and the uh, uh, superficial digital flexor tendon, the distal end of them, of both uh, tendons. If uh, the if the horse improved, if the lameness improved, then then the then the uh, these structures are 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 the ones involved in the problem. If not, then we have to go up uh, one level, and that 
level, and that nerve block is going to be the basis sesamoid. At that level, we will be desensitizing not only the medial and palmar digital nerves, but we're also going to be desensitizing their dorsal branches, both medial and lateral. And we do that at the base of the proximal sesamoid bones. We touch the, the we, we palpate the, uh, the proximal sesamoid bones, the bases of, of both bones, and we give the injections at that level. Um, both the PD and the base sesamoid uh, will be done or should be done when the limb is, is, um, is, is held up. Um, now this will, will also get the pastern joint, uh, which is the basis sesamoid. Again, the, the, the nerves blocked will be the medial and lateral palmar digital nerves as well as their dorsal branches. Now, if, if, the, if the problem or the lameness is improved significantly, then great, the problem has been, has been diagnosed, which is one of these structures. Uh, the pastern is, is the, is the main, main one here with this nerve block. If not, then we have to go uh, one level above, and that is the low palmar nerve blocks. And, and, and with the, ner with the low palmar, we, uh, we, we will be injecting four injections, four injections with the limb standing, with the limb stand, or where the horse is standing, uh, and, 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 and the landmarks is basically at the, uh, buttons of the splints and on the dorsal aspects of the deep digital flexor. Uh, two injections, medial and lateral on, on either, on, on each side. So under the second and fourth buttons, uh, we give two injections, and under the uh, uh, deep digital flexor, both medial and lateral, we give another two injections. And and with the the nerves that we will be desensitizing are uh, the uh, medial and lateral palmar digital nerves, and also the medial and lateral uh, palmar metacarpal nerves, medial and lateral palmar digital nerves or medial and lateral palmar nerves uh, because they they're not they, they're not called digital at this point the digital comes when they are at the level of the fetlock here at this level they are only medial and lateral uh, palmar nerves and medial and lateral palmar metacarpal nerves so you are desensitizing four four nerves uh, with this nerve block you're you're getting also the uh, fetlock joint so uh, if you've eliminated the lameness, then that's great. If not, again, you have to go one step uh, up, and that is the high palmar nerve block. And the high palmar nerve block, again, just like the low palmar nerve block, you do four injections, four injections, uh, two of them between the splints and the cannon, medial and lateral, two injections, and then two uh, at the dorsal aspect of the deep digital flexor, again, medial and lateral again at the mid metacarpal area and with this nerve block you will get uh, the the medial and lateral uh, uh, palmar nerves uh, medial and lateral palmar metacarpal nerves and also the communicating branch the communicating branch with this nerve block uh, you desensitize the uh, um, the uh, 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 Bones, uh, uh, the, the, the proximal sesamo, the suspensory ligament and, and also, uh, the splint bones, uh, and all the structures below that, of course. Uh, with this section, we, we, we conclude the forelimb, and in the, in the next lecture, I will be talking about the, uh, the, the anatomy of the hind limb. Uh, just a, as a reminder, and in, when we talk about the anatomy of the hind limb, I will not talk about the structures from the metatarsus down. So metatarsus, fetlock, pastern, coffin, joints, I will not talk about them because I, they are the same as in the forelimb here. I will only talk about the hip, stifle, and, uh, uh, fet, and, and uh, hop joints.